What was your first reaction when you read the scenario of Suffragette? Well, I worked on it from the very beginning. So I, Alison Owen, the producer, approached me and said, how about a film about the suffragettes? And I said, I've always wanted to do one. For 10 years, I've wanted to make a film about this story because it's never been told on the cinema screens. And then we got together with Abby Morgan, the writer who I've worked with before, and we started delving into the research and finding these extraordinary stories of women who went to prison, hunger striked, um, were force fed, lost their families, all for this cause. And it seemed like a story that really we should be telling now on our screens. It, you know, as we developed the story, it, became, it seemed to become more relevant, which was so peculiar. I mean, it's 100 years on, and it's overdue that we resurrect these women who started to change the course of history. But also it started to echo what was happening around the world. You know, you had Malala speaking out against repression in her country, you had Pussy Riot, this new activism emerging in the UK and in America, feminist voices coming out, talks about police surveillance. We have a scene in our film, um, well, a, a thread in our film about the police operation where they tracked the women, which seemed to echo a lot of surveillance happening today. Also the violence the police used against the women and their tactics of civil disobedience. You know, you can see a lot of world events that chimed with what the suffragettes were doing a hundred years ago. It felt important to remember the debt we owe these women, what they achieved and how important it is to use our vote and to be counted. How did you discover the suffragette? Like how old were you and, and how did it impact you? I didn't learn about them at school. In fact, women's history really didn't get a mention in my whole education. It was kind of buried. And I learned about the First World War and the men and the Second World War and the men, you know, and never what the women were doing. And it was only in my 20s and really 30s that I started to read stories about women and what they've been doing. And once I Once I learned that it wasn't just Mary Poppins' version of suffragettes, you know, it wasn't just women drinking tea and politely asking for the vote, that it was actually women who were prepared to risk so much that I thought, that is really extraordinary. And it's a story of activism and what would push those women that far. And I started to explore the inequality of that time and realize how important this story was. I think it's totally vital that women's history is taught in schools and it's a real hole in, in the school education at the moment. I hope it's starting to change. I mean, I know that suffer the suffrage movement, female suffrage movement is now on the curriculum in the UK and it wasn't when I was growing up. So that's starting to shift. And we spoke to a lot of academics who said it's just starting to come into universities, but it's totally vital that we get those women's stories and we understand the influence of women and the situation of women women through history. What is the really the purpose of um, this movie? Like when you when you made it, mm. what was the thing you wanted the people to think when they when they mm. watched the movie? What is the yeah. what what did you want to do with it? Well, I was very interested in engaging young people and having an audience that was not only women over 35 that there was a younger audience because I feel like it's really really vital for us to remember how far we've come, but also to reflect on how far we've got to go. And I think that, that around the world, globally, there are so many fights still to be had, whether it's gender pay gap, you know, 62 million girls across the world still don't get an education. There are only 22% of national governments are made up of women, and that's double what it was in 1995. One in three girls and women experience sexual violence. We don't have women at the top of companies. We don't have women legislating and changing the law. And we need to shift that balance. We also need to reflect stories in film, you know, so and in media, so that women have their stories up on the screen and see their lives up on the screen and don't just get this male perspective. And it felt important to tell a story from the female perspective to remind us of this vital piece of history and to also engage young people in how they can fight and they can change and they can have agency and we, we can speak out as women. We don't have to be silent. When you came to see producers or anything, was it hard to say, oh, I have a feminist movie, to, maybe we can do it? Was it hard? Yeah, and I think you find yourself saying, look, this is a film that's going to have great actors in it, and this is a film that's going to have explosions, and it's going to, it's also not just about gender, it's also about inequality, and you start to pitch to engage an audience. Um, 
because it is difficult to make these kind of films. As we know, you know, it's the statistics of female directors and female crew generally is very low. 1 to 12 percent each year of films are made by women, so 90 plus percent are made by men, that you don't have many female protagonists in front of the camera. You know, these stories aren't told. So it is an uphill battle. I'm, what I did was I surrounded myself by a very strong team of women and we also found our champions. So we found executive producers who we really got on side, who supported us through this process. But I think if we tried to make this film three or four years ago, we might not have managed. I mean, we developed it for six years, but it was something about the change in the conversation and the fact that people are becoming aware of the lack of women in front and behind the camera and also the, the importance of these stories that helped us make this film I think it was timely what is the next subject that you would you would like to make a movie about well I'm very interested in looking at more stories from the female gaze and looking at the world through the stories of women and that seems to me throughout history and even our recent history there are so many extraordinary stories that haven't yet been on our screens and I'm talking at the moment to Abby Morgan the writer I worked with about um, sex trafficking, about all sorts of issues and ideas. We want to have a human approach and make it something that people can watch and understand and not just feeding them a message, but exploring a world, but in a way that you don't often see. When did you notice that you were a girl and that being a girl would be a problem? If it's yeah. how you felt it. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I suddenly realized I wanted to make films, but I didn't dare put myself forward as a director. And at that point, I started to wish I was a boy <laughs> because I realized how much easier it would have been um, to go into this world as a man or as a, you know, as a, in my 20s as a boy, it would have been easier. Um, and I, so I was very aware of the difficulties um, through my 20s as I entered the film world when I was in rooms often with just men. I was working with male crews, talking to male executives, and it was, you know, it was intimidating in a way. And I had to really build my confidence. And it was all about role models. The minute I saw the work of Claire Denis and Agnes Varda and Jane Campion and Mira Nair and other female filmmakers, Catherine Bigelow, I started to get the confidence and realize that women could do it and I should have the confidence to do it. So then I dared to say, I want to be a director. Um, what is the greatest things you've learned uh you a woman making movies about f feminism. I think what was interesting about studying the suffragettes was they were fearless and they were living in a really restrictive society that saw women as second-class citizens, not even as citizens. They had no legal or economic rights and they dared to speak out. And that made me realize that you have to dare to speak out. And in a way, it gave me courage to make this film, which was a big venture. And I think that it made me realize that once you have a passion for something, you have to just stick to your guns. And women often lack confidence, and we've got to change that. And we've got to realize that if you want to do something, you've got to carry on and do it and just be very, very determined and not be put off. When you, when you started to direct movies, um, did you do it for the artistic part of it or did you do it also because you felt like you needed to make a change? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I think I did have these two strong impulses, actually, because I grew up with this mother who was going into politics and I felt like I wanted to... Um, engage with that world and I started making political documentaries was my first thing that I did and but then I had such a impulse to make um, fiction films and in a way I felt they were a way of exploring the world that was quite liberating and free and so that was the way I, I started to go into that direction and realize that through fiction you can often get at truths and you can talk about issues in an engaging way and that was very exciting to me but I don't think I could make a film that was just pure entertainment I think I'd have to feel it said something about the world so this is a sticker I'm giving you and it okay. says I read Mademoiselle and I'm not wearing any underwear. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Um, oh thank you. No no no, you're doing important work. It's great having a female team and you know